the market, humans with unlimited wants often meet sellers with limited supplies. In such a place, competition is usually a force of good. It leads to more choice, increases the quality of products on offer, and reduces their prices. If competition is absent, monopolies can form. And that's a problem. Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, defined competition as allocating productive resources to their most highly valued uses. For sellers, the money they receive when they sell is more productive than their product. For the buyers, the produce they get is more productive than their money. When a deal is done, neither party may be entirely happy with the agreed price, but at the end, both feel better off. In a competitive market, those who want something the most end up getting it. Competition takes various forms, as the following story illustrates. One dealer in a market decides to bring in bananas to be the first to sell them. He is the only one, and since people love bananas, he sells them at a high price. And it doesn't take long for someone else to see an opportunity for improvement. Competing in price is the most straightforward way in which sellers can compete for customers, because consumers usually prefer to pay less. In order to survive, the first seller, also known as incumbent, may also lower the prices. This pressure on prices is usually leaving customers better off. In theory, this back and forth will continue until both have reached a price that yields zero profit. Then, one may decide to close. But there is also non-price competition. Instead of offering a lower price, newcomers can try to sell higher quality products or innovate. In response to innovators, incumbents may try to improve their offers and come up with ideas to strengthen their position. Both may increase their service hours. So besides lowering prices, another consequence of competition is the range of choices and innovation, both of which are good for the people in the market. In a free market, competition defines the ultimate price and quality of goods on offer, a phenomenon referred to as emergent order. That means it's eventually not up to the shop to decide how much to charge for a product, but intangible forces such as supply, demand, and consumer preferences that emerge over time. If one company is the only one selling a product, we speak of a monopoly. Then the benefits of competition fade, and the naturally emergent order gets disrupted. From perfect competition to monopoly lies a spectrum we can use to define the intensity of competition. In a highly transparent market, we have almost perfect competition with low prices and lots of customer choice. In a market that is dominated by a monopoly, prices are often high, and the variety of options decreases. If just a few companies share the market, we speak of oligopoly, which is also a problem as they often secretly fix prices. In a free and open market with high competition, we see innovative suppliers, happy customers, and an immersive variety of choice. On the other end of the spectrum, we have a monopoly. Suppliers have little bargaining power, the goods they sell are often inferior, customers pay higher prices and wait longer hours. In order for markets to function, governments need to break monopolies up and consumers should support those that rival them. Only then will we see innovation, good products, low prices, happy customers, and markets that leave everyone better off. In summary, Competition usually leads to lower prices, innovation, and higher living standards. Monopolies lead to higher prices, inferior products, and lower living standards. We should try to break up monopolies to support free market competition. To learn more about competition, tell us how you would compete. First, find a product or service available online or in your neighborhood with very little competition. Describe the service and tell us why you think there is little competition. Is it because of a monopoly? Or because the demand is so low that there is little profit to be made? Or is there another reason? Now assume you are opening a competing business. Tell us three things that you would do in order to compete. If you found this helpful, check out our other videos and subscribe. If you want to support our work, join us on patreon.com sprouts. For more information and additional content, visit sproutschools.com.